Oh no, cow on the tracks! This video is a cooperative effort between Achtung Schmetterling and HQX5. When your model train has a track length of over 250 meters, you need to be able to control your trains from anywhere on the track. My friend Chris developed a wireless controller for his model train. The controller uses Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to operate the train. Originally, he controlled the trains using a Windows CE handheld and later a Nokia phone using Bluetooth. After that, he used a desktop PC with a booster to convert the binary code to 24 volts. The signal was then sent to the train through the tracks. Over time, the tracks got too corroded to successfully transmit those signals to the train. So to be able to run the trains without needing to clean the tracks for hours beforehand, he started a project to construct a control unit. He put batteries and a Raspberry Pi Zero W onto the train and then tried various options to control it, such as a Nokia phone and an Android app. Now the trains were able to run without power from the tracks. But none of the controllers he had so far were really ideal. Either the screen was too small, as was the case with the Nokia, or there weren't enough physical buttons to control the trains without looking at the controller. And while the Android app provided the possibility to add further buttons quickly and easily, it very quickly became obvious that a touchscreen was not a suitable device because you can't operate it without looking at it. This means you can't react to a situation involving the train while actually looking at the train. So he developed his own custom controller. It's based on an ESP32 microcontroller with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The locomotives are fitted with similar hardware so the controller can communicate with them. The display on the controller lists all available locomotives by scanning for their Wi-Fi signal. You select the locomotive you want to control from this list using the two small buttons next to the screen. Connecting to Rocco. You can now set the speed using the vertical slider. The display then shows the speed that is set and when it's reached. The software is programmed such that the train has an acceleration similar to what a real-life train would have. Yes, and it goes forward. The controller also features several buttons to control the lights, horn, and play an additional audio recording. Yes, I see it. So these are the lights. I guess that's the, the horn. Okay, so we have the horn, we have the announcement, we have the emergency stop. Oh no, cow on the tracks! Uh -huh. The motor sound? Wait, so it's not making, oh. All right, okay, so it's off, now, now it's on again. Now we do the motor again. There's also a switch to change direction. It's oriented at a 90 degree angle to the other switches to make it easy to locate. Now it should go backwards. Oh my God, it's amazing. Certain protective mechanisms were also built in. When the controller loses the connection to the train, an emergency stop is automatically carried out. At this time, there are two controllers, the prototype and a more refined second version. Because the controller connects directly to the train, you can use multiple controllers to control trains. The fact that the controller is wireless makes it possible to move around as desired, which is important since the track covers such a large area. Currently, eight locomotives have been adapted so that they can be controlled using these controllers. If you want us to make another video explaining the gory details of the controllers, let us know in the comments. Also, let us know how you control your garden railway.